Hi all, welcome to the session. In the last session, we had discussed about electrolytic conductors, electrolytic conductance, variation of electrolytic conductance with the concentration etc. Now, today in this session, we shall discuss about conductometry, which is the method of determination of electrical conductance by means of a conductometer. That is, you analyze or determine the electrical conductance of an electrolyte by means of a conductometer. And this can be used to monitor the progress of a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction can be monitored using conductometry. Now, in conductometric titration is one method of uh, conductometry. In conductometric titration, we carry out the titration by determining the end point through conductance measurement. And uh, the equivalence point or the end point of the titration is determined graphically by plotting the change in conductance as a function of volume of the titrant added. Now the principle of conductometric titration is that the when we carry out the titration one of the ion is replaced by the other and uh, uh, these two ions since they will be having different mobility they will be showing different conductivity and the variation of conductivity conductance can be measured and the course of the titration can be monitored. So, the principle of conductometric titration is, as the titration proceeds, one ion is replaced by another and the replacement of these ions can be monitored by the variation in the conductance of the electrolytic solution. Now, uh, there are different types of conductometric titration. There are a lot of types. We will be discussing two types, the acid base titration or the neutralization titration and the precipitation titration. Now the neutralization titrations are of different types depending upon the uh, type of acid and type of base you take. We have uh, titration between strong acid and strong base like HCl and NaOH. Titration of weak acid with strong base like acetic acid with NaOH titration of strong acid with weak base like a titration of HCl versus ammonium hydroxide. Similarly, we can monitor the reaction between a weak acid and a weak base like acetic acid and ammonium hydroxide. And also one of the important aspect of conductometric titration is that you can take mixture of acids and titrate it against a strong base and determine the concentration of each acid individually. That is, you take a mixture of acetic acid in HCl, titrate it against NaOH, you will get the volume or the concentration of acetic acid separately, HCl separately. So all these uh, titrations can be carried out very easily and accurately using conductometric titration. Precipitation titration is another titration which can be conducted, I mean carried out conductometrically. For example, titration between KCl and AgNO3, you can determine the concentration of either of these. Now, the advantage over here is that usually during precipitation titrations, the precipitates will be formed and carrying monitoring the titration by the indicator method will be difficult because of the precipitation. So that can be overcome by conduct carrying out the titration conductometrically. Now, how do we carry out this method? the procedure of the titration. The experimental setup is this way. You take the analyte in a beaker. Into that you add, um, I'm sorry, into that you dip a conductivity cell which is connected to a conductometer. Now to this, now fix a burette in such a way that you can add the titrant from the burette into the beaker containing the analyte. 
So this is the experimental setup for conductometric titration. You have a beaker in which the analyte is present. Dip a conductivity cell into the beaker. Connect it to a conductometer. Fix a burette containing the titrant from which you can add the titrant into the analyte present in the beaker. Now the titrant is added from the beaker sorry burette into the beaker. Now when you add the uh, titrant you add 0.5 ml or 1 ml of the titrant stir it well measure the conductance note it down. So you add the titrant from the burette into the analyte stir it well using a glass rod measure the conductance from the conductometer note it down. So you keep on adding the titrant from the burette into the beaker and after every addition determine the conductance. Now remember that uh, the little amount, the amount of uh, the volume of the titrant added is minimum say 0.5 ml or 1 ml will do. Lesser the volume of the titrant added better will be the result or accurate will be the result. Now after noting down the conductance for every addition of the titrant into the analyte, plot a graph of volume of the titrant added against conductance. Conductance in the y-axis and the volume of the titrant added in the x-axis. Now for different types of titrations which we had list, uh, listed earlier, the pattern of the plot will be different. Now from the plot, you will find that there is an intersection of two lines in the graph and it is that intersection, the volume against that point of intersection which will be the volume of the or the end point of the titration or the equivalence point of the titration. Now the graph will be something like this. Now here you can see conductance uh, is plotted against volume of the base and for different types of titration you have got different pattern of plots. This is the plot for so strong acid versus strong base. This is the equivalence point. They see the strong pattern of strong acid versus weak base is like this. Weak acid versus weak base is like this and weak acid versus strong base. So depending upon the type of titration you carry out, the pattern of the graph will be different. We'll be explaining, we shall discuss it or I shall be explaining it in detail in the coming sessions. Each type of titrations we shall be discussing and how is the pattern of plot, you know, how does it vary etc. we'll be discussing. Now what are the advantages of conductometric titration? Number one, you need not have an indicator. So you need not look on for the change in color, color change of the at the end point. You're not adding any indicator. And you can carry out the titration for colored solutions, dilute solutions or turbid suspensions. Otherwise, using the indicator method, it will be difficult to carry out titration for these type of solutions. We can determine the concentration of weak acid, weak base, mixture of weak and strong acid, etc. using conductometric titration. The end point also can be determined very accurately and precisely with minimum error since the end point is determined graphically. Even though we have a lot of advantages, we do have disadvantages also. High concentration of salt in solution will mask the conductivity change and therefore such titrations, I mean such solutions will not give us accurate result. And also we cannot apply conductometric titration to redox system and uh, for carrying out uh, for monitoring redox system we have got potentiometric titration. We will be discussing it in another session about that. So these are the two major disadvantages of conductometric titration. Now what are the applications of conductometric titrations? The, we can determine the purity of distilled and deionized water 
you can determine the deuterium ion concentration in water deuterium mixture salinity of sea water can be determined alkalinity of fresh water can be determined pollution water pollution can be determined like what the what is the extent of pollutants present in water what type of pollutants are present etc can be checked using conductometric titration the solubility of sparingly soluble salt can be determined like uh, the solubility of AgCl, BSO4. We had uh, in the previous session we have seen how conductance can be used to determine the solubility of sparingly soluble salt. The same method can be used here. All right. So these are the uh, points which we need to discuss under conductometry and conductometric titrations. We shall be discussing everything in detail in the sessions coming sessions. If you have any doubts regarding this session, please feel free to ask, clarify your doubts, do contact me. Until then, thank you.